on Women's World. With an alarming increase in child abuse in Papua New Guinea, what measures can parents take to protect children? For many parents, security and trust are their main concerns. And so, interaction with children outside the family is often limited. I joined the Little League Playdate group for some energetic playtime and find out about the importance of playtime and social interaction amongst children outside of their own families. Kids have a really uh, amazing way of naturally socialising. Also, have you ever uploaded your child's pictures online? There are risks involved with this and we hear from an international expert about the dangers. Plus, how much screen time is too much for our kids? Hi, I'm Tanya Nugent. And I'm Geraldine Calabai. All that and more coming up on Women's World. Today, parents in Papua New Guinea face numerous challenges when it comes to raising children. And many of those issues were unheard of 30 years ago. If you thought drugs and alcohol were the only threat to children, think again. While parts of PNG remain undeveloped and untouched, overall, the country has seen major developments in a very short space of time. We've been fast-tracked into a technology-based world and exposed to all sorts of outside ideas. Our customary way of living is changing, taking on a more Western approach. We now take you to the streets and ask some mothers how they feel about parenting in 2017. It's very difficult with the modern technology are coming up and all this, like kids are more exposed to some things which we were not. Actually, age 17 and 18 upwards, peer group, um, it's one of the influence that they will disturb more. You have to have a lot of money to raise children. Small teachers asking, beginning to me, making some of something, school fundraising, no kind of same name asking me, and I miss it. Find him hard, look, see money. Because of this, uh, like technology, and it's like, I know, beginning, you'll go out, low wave, lol. Sometimes we play hard, low discipline, all. Reports of child abuse are alarming, and although Papua New Guinea doesn't have a database on reported child abuse cases at the moment, a report by organisation Save the Children, which was released last year, found that 70% of children in Papua New Guinea suffer physical abuse, 50% face family violence, and that many cases aren't even reported. So have we as parents, adults and a society failed when it comes to protecting our children? What measures have been taken to protect children and what can we do? Geraldine attends a child protection workshop run by a PNG organisation called Pickinini Watch to find out. So I'm brain blow and I'm sponge. Mama, you miss use sponge to wash my dishes in the house. Okay, brain blow, pick in me and I'm going to grow up. I'm going to go inside the sponge and go big plan I had me. Okay? But I need to squeeze the water out and I dry my light. Information, my experience are awesome. Hi Zora, thank you for having us over. So could you tell us a little bit about Pikinini Watch? Yeah, um, Pikinini Watch is a community-based organization. It started back in 2016 when I used to work with Save the Children. Um, I decided to come up with this group when I conducted a survey called um, the Child Protection National Systems Mapping um, Research. It was a research that was conducted and the results from that research uh, moved me. It moved me because when we went to five provinces, Isipik, um, Morobe, Goroka, NCD, um, in autonomous region of Bougainville, we come to see that the results show that there's a high number of children who are survivors of violence and who are at risk of violence and the number of services that are available for them is very limited. And services at the end that are limited and that are available, it only responds to the child when the child has already been abused. But there is not much intervention when it comes to um, proactively preventing that abuse from happening. And the need being that there's a huge lack of information, education and awareness amongst our people about parenting, about child development, about child protection. Um, that's why we decided to come up with this group. We have a lot of children out in the streets while selling big peanuts, CD or car parts. Um, Bikinini Watch conducted a child protection workshop at the SDA church at Nine Mile. Both adults and children participated in the session. 
Zora highlighted that parents have the responsibility to create a safe and trustworthy environment for children. Zora, how much time are parents spending with children these days? And how much time is enough? I think that's something that a lot of working parents, a lot of parents who live in the urban centers are struggling with. Sometimes we think that money is enough as long as there's a roof over the children's head, there is clothes and food in the kitchen, that is enough. But children really need to bond with their parents, they really need a one-on-one -on -one relationship with their children after work. Um, and that is to get to understand what's happening in their children's life, what's happening in their school, what interests them, um, what sports team are they a part of, when is the game on, when is the independence uh, game on, is the, are they having relationship problems if they're teenagers, um, are they being bullied at school, is somebody following them, making them feel uncomfortable. Um, these are things that parents can only be aware of and to better protect and safeguard their children once they commit time to it. How often do children speak out about being abused or touched inappropriately to their parents? That is a very important question because abuse usually happens to children um, um, in, in spaces where there is trust. Um, so it is important for parents to create that environment and to have that talk with their children about saying, hey, if somebody touches you at this part of your body and you don't feel good about it, please let me know. Um, I will believe you and I will help you. Um, because I think one thing children may be afraid of is that this topic has never been discussed in the house, that it is a taboo. And we'd like to encourage for it to be given as um, safety information to children, that they know what is appropriate touching and what is inappropriate touching. And when that happens to them, um, what actions to take, that they can report mom or dad or the auntie or the uncle or the teacher in the school, and that they can be believed um, because sometimes children are accused of being the ones who let it on, uh, be, being not believed, and that discourages them from coming out. And they probably, and most of the time, tell their friends and not parents or guardians who could protect them from this. So I'd, I'd like to say having small talks with your children, letting them know it is okay, letting them know what is um, appropriate touching, inappropriate touching, and encouraging them to believe you um, to trust you that you will believe them and you will protect them, whatever it is. So then you will see the child gain confidence and open up. Because children do have a resilience and they are able to protect themselves. We just have to open up and reach out to them. Then they can gain that confidence to speak up about it. Do you think our children are exposed easily to violence on a daily basis? Yeah, I, I, I love that question because I, as a parent and a single mom, I've been going shopping one time for my children's cartoon and I tried to find something that had like zero content of violence. I couldn't find any. Everything had 50% or more violence in it and that's where our world has gotten to. So in terms of ha having exposure to violence, it's right there in the home, in the form of a TV series or an action movie, or even in children's cartoon where they make violence seem funny. We speak to some participants who attended the workshop on how they feel about child protection. At the end of the day, my um, personal approach to parenting is like, I don't want to have children that are not good human beings. Just to be a good person. It doesn't matter about the, what type of job you have, what type of um, you know career you will have. You make a lot of money or not. It's about you know are you a good person or not. So also me personally, now when we come up, only can role model or this role. Only the beginning where me so come across role every day of life for me. And I'm not necessarily you know beginning for me a person, but not beginning for me for brother sister for me na. Only the good brother sister. safe and trustworthy space outside of the family unit for our children to interact freely can be a challenge. But after the break, we look at a new group that's been set up to provide exactly that. 
and we discover the many benefits of social interaction amongst children and parents in an organized play date. Welcome back to Women's World. We're taking a closer look at parenting challenges in 2017 on today's program. And sadly, quite frequently, we hear about a child being physically and emotionally abused. Many times this happens not far from our doorstep. There is a need for parents to create a safe environment for children to play, explore, be creative and interact with children outside of their family. And that's one of the main reasons behind the establishment of the Lick Lick Playdate Group a regular get-together that's open to all, where children and parents can both interact in a safe, organised environment and also enjoy the numerous other benefits of playdates too. Kids have a really uh, amazing way of naturally socialising. They don't have any judgment or, you know, opinions of each other at this age. They just want to play and they see something and they either like it or they don't. Okay, so Jamie, could you tell us a little bit about the play date that you set up here? Uh, okay, well, our play date's called Lick Lick Play Date. The program's pretty straightforward. What we would usually do is free play when they get here because they see the toys and they want to run around. And then we would have a story time while we, oh, sorry, not, yeah, story time while we tidy up a little bit, or a meal time and then a story time later, some sort of organized activity. Um, today we were going to just do some like sing songs, sing along, you know, my hands are clapping and things like that. And it depends on the, the ages that come in on the day. And then free play to finish. And then hopefully at the end of the, the two hours they're exhausted and the mums can take them home and they can go to sleep. Can you tell me your name and how many kids you have here today? My name is Rebecca and I have two kids. This is Camille and Fletcher. Why did you decide to bring your kids over today? Um, I just saw it on social media, on Facebook, um, and um, one of the girls that I live with was coming as well, so we thought, I thought it would be a good idea to um, have a day where the kids can run around and play with some other children as well. Could you tell me like some benefits as a parent for bringing your child to a play date like this? Uh, just social interaction, um, mixing with children of different ages as well, so um, getting to learn how to share um, and get along with other children. My name's Jasmine Alma. Jasmine, how many kids do you have here? Um, I have six kids, all of them are here. This is their last day of their holidays, so I brought all of them here. How did you find out about the play date? I found out about the play date on Facebook through one of my sisters who already came for the first one. So I thought I'd bring my kids in to check it out. So how are you finding it like now with your kids? It's really good. They get to meet new friends, play along, learn to get along with other people besides their siblings. Playdates help children learn how to interact cooperate and collaborate with others. They also learn how to share, take turns, be polite and respectful. Playing also boosts creativity and imagination. You may wonder what the benefits are for parents. Well, playdates are just as beneficial to the parents as well. It helps parents socialize with other parents, share parenting experiences and learn new ideas and it gives a parent an insight to how their child makes a new friend or interacts in a group. I just wanted to have something available for the mums around this area or um, who are, especially those who are at home and don't get to, you know, get out with the little ones unless it's for, you know, shopping or... So the play date is for children in the ages of... Uh, normally it would be from birth until um, four, maybe five, depending if they're going to school. So non-school aged kids, because this program will be running Tuesdays from 10 to 12, that's school time. So Honestly, kids have a really 
uh, amazing way of naturally socializing. They don't have any judgment or you know, opinions of each other at this age. They just want to play. How long do you plan for this to go on for? Um, our goal for this is to, to start with a six month um, and just see how that goes. Uh, well, the one thing um, that's really important to us is family, community. And, um, you know, things are different now than they were before. Uh, before things were, people were closer, I guess community was closer. And now, and also our society is changing. And I think it's really important for our kids to, um, I mean, we have a lot of cousins and brothers and sisters around, you know, but it's important to get to know the other kids. And uh, we wait till school starts, but, you know, now's a good time, especially when they're little, to expose them to other cultures and families. I'm a square. I'm a square. I'm a square. <laughs> After the break, Tanya talks to an expert about the dangers of parents uploading their children's pictures online. watching Women's World and we're looking at parenting in PNG in 2017. One of the biggest challenges for parents is understanding the impact of technology on children. There are very few if any experts in this field here in PNG. So Tanya dialed one on Skype, Dr. Joanne Orlando, an expert on children and technology from the University of Western Sydney, Australia. With decades of experience specializing in this field, Dr. Orlando sheds some light on the benefits and the downsides of excessive screen time and warns us of some of the dangers of uploading our children's pictures online. Joanne, welcome to Women's World and thank you for making time for us all the way from down there in Sydney, Australia. Thank you, happy to be here. Um, here up in Papua New Guinea, Joanne, uh, we, we're starting to give uh, more and more technology to children, especially in our um, urban areas in the city where there's access to modern devices. But uh, many parents uh, still have a lot to learn in terms of children's, uh, in terms of usage of technology. We see it now that, that there's, you know, it's used in education, it's used certainly in the, in a professional, in the professional setting. Um, but with children, um, how much time is, is okay and what, what sort of ages are appropriate ages for children to start you know, getting online and getting smartphones and getting mobile phones? So there's actually screen time recommendations and they are published by the American Academy of Pediatricians. A very official set of uh, recommendations that are used. So their latest recommendations, which were just released a few months ago, say that children 18 months and younger shouldn't really be using any screen. The only reason that they would be using it would be to video chat with a parent or maybe a grandparent, and that's using things like Skype. Uh, for children who are between the ages of two and five, there's a maximum of one hour per day on screen. So that might be on their laptop or on a tablet or on a phone. Um, and they're recommending that if a child's doing something like that for the one hour, it should be educational, so not just sort of sitting in front of YouTube or something, um, and that a parent should be with them and talking about uh, what they're watching, so to make it an educational experience. And then for children who are five through to 18, well, we all know that they can be on their phone or on their technology for a long time. So rather than putting a, a recommended amount of time, they stated, well, parents, it's up to you to decide on how old your child is, um, what day or what week it is. So school holidays, they might be using technology a little bit more than when school is in. So what are some of the downsides or the negative impacts of too much screen time? Very young children are using technology. And if a very young child is continuously using technology, then they're probably not getting the same opportunity to talk to a parent or to talk to others, um, then they're missing out on opportunities to learn to talk properly. And I think that, um, many people worry about the isolation as well, a child locked in their room or by themselves online doing something like that. That can be an issue. One of the um, tendencies I have noticed since being up here is the use of not just um, 
screens like tablets and smartphones, but even just television as, an, as a substitute babysitter that parents kind of think that it's okay to put cartoons on all day, that kind of thing. We know it has a calming effect, mm. but if we're continuously using a, a phone or technology to keep children quiet or to manage their behaviour, it gets to a point where that just doesn't work anymore. So what are your strategies then? How are you going to manage their behaviour? But it also affects your relationship with your child because you're missing out on, on chances to talk to them, to just spend those day-to-day -day activities, doing nothing in the car, just chatting, looking around. They're really important for the parent-child relationship. Your child is continuously being asked to look at the screen and they're going to miss out on all those things, plus learning social skills of being out. I mean, this is new technology for adults as well. To, you know, the internet hasn't been in, you know, it's only been within the last decade, really, that people have had access. So um, adults are learning as well, and it's often um, children know more about technology than adults. Is this something that you find as well? One of the things that I think is the best way of approaching this is to, can, to regularly do things with your child on your phone or, or on technology. And it's got a number of benefits. One is you can teach each other skills, so that's one benefit. Mm -hmm. A second benefit is that by just doing something with your child online, maybe playing a game or searching for something, you get to understand the skills that your child has. Um, so it helps to break down those barriers. Yeah, and perhaps um, if you could give a, a reminder to parents here about some of the dangers um, when they leave that, leave their children unsupervised or unchecked online. So a child online is exposed to a whole lot of different kinds of people, places, interests, ways of thinking. And because children are going online quite early and they're going on the internet quite early, they're not necessarily very worldly about that. So it's important to make sure that you've got safety settings adjusted on the device that they're using. And that's really easy to do. You just really need to go online and just put in the make of your whatever device you're using and it'll show you exactly how to do that. It's really important to teach kids not to accept invitations from people that they don't know. Now these random invitations can pop up anytime. It could be on a game, it could be when they're on social media, it could be when they're just searching a website. And often they'll take you to a site which has got lots of adult sexual themes, like a pornographic site, as a way of just luring people into those sites. Yeah. The other issue around it is with parents themselves in terms of privacy and we see a lot of parents, you know, with young children, you know, obviously the children are the apples of their eyes and they post lots of gorgeous pictures of kids and um, how, what, how is this, um, you know, what, is, what, sort of, what are some of the implications and impacts that this can have in terms of privacy, in terms of the children's own, you know, right to, you know, their own identity online, etc.? Yeah, look, it's a really interesting point. I wrote an article about it a little while ago. So yes, we, are, we adore our kids. We want to show everyone, put photos up online. But what we're actually doing is we're creating our child's digital identity for them. So it's probably happening from the time a child is a baby. You put those first baby shots up. Um, and then from there, for the first you know, 10, 12 years of a child's life, you're the one who's creating their digital identity. So you need to be really careful in what you're saying about your child online and what photos you're posting up. Because as we know, once things are online, they're there forever. Yeah. So if you're constantly putting up photos of your child having a tantrum, like you might think it's cute and funny, but you know, in terms of, of it being embarrassing for your child, yeah, it's probably going to be really embarrassing for them by the time they're 13 or 14. But still, that will stay up online. It won't be able to be taken down. So we need to consider the embarrassment factor. I think that's the best way. Yeah. To yeah. It. So while you might think, well, this is just a real way, you know, this is real family life, and it has its ups and downs. Sure, it does. But we don't need to put all of those up online to share. Maybe there are some of those crazy moments with your, ba with your baby or with your child. That's just best to have as a conversation with yeah. friends rather than posting it up online. Have a slide night at home. <laughs> yeah, it's a private slide night, not one for the whole world. <laughs> Great. Dr Joanne 
Orlando, some fantastic advice for parents up here um, on how to protect our children, things we can do. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks for joining us on Women's World today. Thank you so much. It certainly is a minefield out there with all this new technology. Lots to watch out for. And that's all for this week. If you would like a free session on child protection, you can contact Piccaninny Watch PNG on their Facebook page or email them on PiccaninnyWatchPNG at gmail.com. And if you're interested in bringing your child to the Lick Lick Playdate, you can visit their Facebook page for more information. We'll be back same time next week. Until then, I'm Geraldine Calabai. And I'm Tanya Nugent. See you then.